Okay. If my if my sound cuts out again, I'll just advise uh, Pat. You can jump in and and carry on my part of the training if you can do that. So let's let's move forward uh, with the agenda. Diana, if you can change slides. So we'll do uh, some background on the CARES Act. Uh, we'll cover the program, uh, some background on the program aspect of it, application, and both the application guidelines and instructions, a bit on reporting, and we also allow time for question and answer uh, at the end of the session. Could you change the slide? Yeah, thanks. So before we actually get started, I'd like to point out that many of you obviously know this routine. On the, the bottom of the screen, uh, or just maybe on the top, if you scroll your cursor, uh, you'll see a series of bubbles. One is for chat. And if you press that chat button, and that's on the slide here on the left side with a green circle around it, that'll open up a chat box, which you can then enter your, your comments and make sure to select host to the person you're sending it to. That way, Diana will see it and then press send, and that sends your message to us. Um, if you have a question for us to ask at the end of the session, uh, you will see on your screen there's also a, a, either a box for questions, or if you don't have that, there'll be a box with three uh, dots on it. And I, uh, you can press Q&A. You have to actually press that box, and your question box will show up. And uh, you can enter your question at that point, and then we can end, uh, we'll get, read the question at the end of the session and answer the questions you have. So, uh, next slide, please. So, a little bit of background on the CARES Act. Uh, the CARES Act uh, funds many programs across the country, and we are focusing today on the emergency shelter grant portion. There's also uh, funding for the community development block grant program. And, and the whole program, I advise folks to stay in tune with that because uh, the community development block grant has already been helpful to many of you through uh, funding through local government. And the plan is as we move forward to, to provide some additional funding. So that'll be beneficial to you as well to, to be aware of what's going on there. Um, we have, uh, along with the CARES Act, we, uh, there are two rounds of CARES Act dollars that impact us. There was uh, $1 billion in the first round and $3 billion in the second round. We're focused on the $1 billion portion today and we will get into more information about the second round uh, later in the year, uh, and that will be a separate application process. Um, all HCRP grantees are eligible uh, to apply for these, these funds in this round of funding, and it's important that you um, plan to submit the application. Our expectation is that all currently funded HCRP grantees will apply for dollars and, and uh, be able to receive those dollars. We're going to award the dollars on an allocation basis uh, based on what your current award is, and we'll get into more of those details a bit later. But in addition to the currently funded shelters, we're also going to provide funding to the Ohio Domestic Violence Network which will provide dollars to uh, domestic violence shelters in the balance of state. And we're also providing some funding to help provide coverage, uh, motel vouchers, or, or also funding shelters that don't currently receive HCRP funding uh, to receive those dollars. And we'll get into the details of how that will work at the end later in the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So we have um, the typical programs that we fund through the Homelessness Crisis Response Program. We'll be funding emergency shelters, homelessness prevention, and rapid rehousing. One of the differences this year, uh, with the CARES Act rather, 
is that homeless prevention dollars can target folks with 50% of area median income and less. And the uh, if, you, if you're going to serve people at 50% uh, or less, your HMIS system will have to uh, create a separate a program, I guess that's what it's called, to track those folks separate from your standard homeless prevention uh, program because they have different income requirements or different eligibility requirements. So that's something you can work out with your, your HMIS administrator. And on the, the shelter side, uh, we get into um, all the, our currently funded shelters are eligible, plus um, uh, lead agencies will be able to apply for emergency shelter grant funds also to provide some assistance to uh, shelters that currently don't receive funding from us or for paying for motel vouchers uh, as they're needed in the community. Next slide, please. So Ohio received $45.6 million in CARES Act funding, and those dollars were split between the Development Services Agency, which received just over $21 million, and the entitlement areas which received $24.3 million, and those dollars will flow directly to those eight entitlement areas, or all the entitlement areas, actually, that make up their present in eight counties. Uh, typically, we award dollars for HCRP through our uh, a split between the balance of state and entitlement areas. That splits usually around 50% uh, for uh, entitlement area and 50% for balance of uh, with with uh, the lack of additional dollars going to those balance of state areas, uh, we're going to change that split just a bit here uh, for the CARES Act dollars. And for emergency shelter, we plan to award 70% of the funds to the balance of state. And for housing stability program, we expect to award 60% of the funds to um, balance of state areas. Next slide, please. Okay, so I mentioned the Homeless Crisis Response Program. That is the vehicle we're using to get the funds awarded. That would, that's the quickest way we have to get money out on the street. And this first phase of uh, the CARES Act money, we want to get out as quickly as we can. And we don't even have the money from HUD, but we want the money to be out on the street where it's desperately needed right now. So we're using the Homeless Crisis Response Program. Through that, we will fund uh, all the existing HCRP grantees, along with the Ohio Domestic Violence Network, as I, I mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. So of the, fir of the first 21.3 million that we have, the first 16 million is being awarded in phase one. And so I want to break that down uh, relatively quickly here. Uh, 13 million of that is going to go to existing HCRP shelter grantees and HCRP housing stability grantees. Regardless of the year you were funded, we expect you to come in for some of this funding. We will uh, have allocation amounts post it when we uh, release the application next week, so you'll know the amount that you'll be applying for. But all of that $13 million will be awarded on an allocation basis. The $2 million that are being awarded to the Ohio Domestic Violence Network, um, that will be uh, also an emergency shelter application to award uh, domestic violence shelters in the balance of state. The one million for region leads, that's also a special pot of money that region leads can apply for that funding to pay for uh, perhaps uh, uh, emergency shelters in their region uh, or, or for entitlement to be a single county uh, to apply for shelters in that uh, area that are not that do not receive ACRP funding from us. That's one avenue uh, for, for funding. It can also be used to pay for 
alternative emergency shelter arrangements that may be outside of a uh, motel setting, uh, outside of a motel situation, um, or to pay for motels uh, in counties that don't have any OHCP funded shelters. So in most cases for the, the motel portion, entitlements more than likely won't be applying for that portion of it since uh, we more than likely fund an a, uh, a shelter in your community that provides that uh, shelter for that population. And if motel vouchers are needed, they would be providing the motel money through their award. So the two million and the one million are special pocket one-time funding to get dollars out to providers that we recognize are, are helping meet the need of helping keep people off the streets, keeping them in a safe housing situation during the, the COVID-19 uh, situation that we're going through. Next slide, please. The second phase of the money, which is the balance of the 21.3 million, will be awarded later in the year. Uh, what we want to do is get some information on uh, how the first phase uh, funds are being used, what the performance is, person served, and the unmet needs. Once those funds are awarded, uh, it will be based, awarded to you based on a grant amendment to your uh, existing grant agreement. And we will um, make those awards, like I said, later we want to get some experience and, and better idea of what the need is in the state. This first phase of money that we're awarding now, uh, we recognize there's an urgent need for a lot of, a lot of you folks have, have need for these dollars and have for quite some time. So that, that's our plan moving forward with, with the second phase of the dollars. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the dates that we have listed here, I, I want to emphasize that they're estimated dates. Um, the, the thought is that folks will be able to reimburse for costs related to folks that were planning for COVID-19 or actually implementing the program and dealing with COVID-19 uh, back to January 21st. That's the date that was listed in the HOPA guidelines. We expect it to be the same for ESG. But all these dates are estimated because we don't have the information from HUD yet. Once they provide it, these dates may change, which you need to be aware of. Right now, we're planning on the grant running through September 30th of next year uh, for the work completion date, which then makes your uh, drawing funds and your report date uh, one month and two months later than that. But we, I want to note that, that those dates are estimates based on what we think will be, be happening uh, at this point. Next slide. So for uh, just some general things, uh, it's one of the main differences for a lot of our folks is the region leads role and what they'll be able to apply for. And uh, a major shift is that they will be able to apply for emergency shelter grant funds uh, to fund either Alternate emergency shelters in the region, those folks that don't receive funding from us currently, uh, and, and also pay for motel rooms uh, in counties that do not have any OHCP funded shelter. Also, uh, in, in this round of funding, uh, the Ohio Domestic Violence Network and Region Lead will be able to apply for up to 7% of their request for admin. And that's a change. It also recognizes the additional work that region leads do and administering these funds and working with partner agencies and such. So that's, that's one significant difference. Uh, emergency shelters that are applying for shelter grant funding, their limit on uh, admin will be uh, remain at 5%. Next slide. All right, Patrick's taking over from here and hopefully get better. Welcome there. Thank you. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, <clears throat> so the program is federal funds and we're gonna, and grantees are gonna be required to, to, to uh, follow the same guidelines as our regular HCRP program. That includes complying with Fair Housing ADA, 
Um, everybody needs to be entering information into HMIS, all comparable uh, database system. That includes non-funded agencies that we currently don't fund and domestic violence shelters through the ODVN would do uh, enter information in a comparable system. And people will be doing coordinated entry. We expect that everybody, and for shelters, people should follow the Ohio basic shelter standards. Next slide, please. Okay. So the good news is you can start the application right away. Uh, although the ocean section isn't ready yet, we do have some, we do have the documents and forms that you could start and look at. And that's available on our TA website and we'll have the information for that at my last slide. Um, so some general, general instructions or general hints. Um, so we'll be reviewing quite a few applications and so you wanna have everything organized and readable. Although this isn't a competitive program, we still might, if things aren't filled out correctly, we might have, you might have, we might have to get back to you and it could delay your funding. So with the questions and the narrative questions, you should type your response right after the question. This way we can locate things we're looking for, find it very easily, um, and then answer the question directly. We don't need extra information, we just need to know your response to the questions we ask. Um, there is a budget forms for the for stability and for shelter. You should make sure you complete that. And we recommend you complete that before you're doing the ocean budget. And also the double check, they need to be consistent. The for the budgets, the budget tables will have formulas and, and so on to help you figure that out, you know, make sure every numbers are consistent, they match, et cetera. Um, because it is going to be complicated with all the different activities we have. Um, application instructions will be in the application document at the, towards the end. Um, that will be very helpful for you when you fill out your OCEAN application. And also it has the budget, it has directions on how to complete the budgets. So the best part, the best place to start is there. Um, we're always, we're always, your grant, your grant managers are always available to answer questions. Um, the best way to do is, best way to contact is the emails because we're working from home, but that should be pretty straightforward. And then the reporting, I think Scott talked about the reporting, it's basically, it's the same grant. We use an HCRP platform. Uh, you do status reports every six months and you do one final performance report. Next slide, please. Okay, so Ocean will, I think Ocean will be ready Monday. Um, but when you need, what you need to do in the meantime is first, it makes sense. If you don't have a current Ocean password, you can't get into Ocean. So what you need to do is go into Ocean, just log in and make sure you're current. And if you're not, you can email one of our staff and the person is Stephanie Miller. So you, you should email Stephanie Miller at development.ohio.gov. She could reset your password. Um, she normally gets back to people the same day or the next day, but it's very fundamental. You, you, you're able, we have a very short timeline. You need to be able to start this right away. So make sure you have a current ocean login. Now there's also, also a problem we have, um, usually the applications are due 11.59 .50, p.m. And what happens a lot of times is someone's working on it that late and they found out they don't have permit, they don't have the permission to submit the application in Ocean. Now you could call me or call our office, but I'm not going to be there. So at that late hour. So what you need to do, okay, so you need to see what your, uh, your Ocean account is and what your permissions are. You could be, and if you're, an, you have to be an application preparer to start the application. But then there's also another um, thing. You also, there's also the application submitter. So you make sure that, so that that person is the one that has to submit. It could be the same person, but you need to check in advance. Because every year we have some, some people have trouble submitting the application because they're not authorized in OCEAN to um, submit the application. And now, um, next slide, please. 
So, oh yeah, and previously, you, you select a active application, I'm sorry. Active application, that's how you start the pro, that's how you start the application. And then you go application type. We have so many options, but the options you're gonna pick is homeless crisis response program. Then you'll put add new grant request. Next slide, please. Now you have two choices that you do now. We're not doing emergency, not doing HDRP emergency shelter or stability or targeted reparatory housing. What the choices you're gonna make are between housing stability and emergency shelter cares. So you select whichever one you want. Now keep in mind that some, um, some agencies may be applying, so a lead agency may be applying for shelter. It may be the first time they're applying for shelter Say they're doing uh, non-funded and um, alternate housing and motel units. So they would do two separate projects. They would, the region leads would also would do a housing stability CARES application as well as an emergency shelter application in that scenario. Um, next slide, please. Now there's a project, there's different projects and it's not, it's not called project. I know this is a, on this, on this, slide it said it's labeled project i think we have another name for it now but so you have administration the administration would be for the whole grant keep in mind that's the whole grant and that's a totally separate project so if you're if you're requesting a hundred thousand dollars and you're requesting five percent admin you would do that for the whole for the whole grant for the whole grant okay um, and that'd be one administration project per application regardless of whether you have more than one shelter project, let's say. Now, um, admin, see, we're using the Ocean um, HCRP platform, and the way, and we had to modify that for admin because it's seven percent. It's now seven percent for lead agencies. However, it, however, emergency shelters are is only is only five percent. Is only five percent. Now, if you go to 6%, it won't show you an error, but you're over. You see what I mean? So you got to make sure that, you're, that for ACRP funded emergency shelter projects, they can only apply for 5% admin. If you go for 5% and, and don't exceed 7%, it won't show an error, but we, you'll have to, you'll have to re, we'll have to work with you on that. So double check that when, you, when you're submitting the application. For, uh, and, and again, for housing stability at 7%, so that's no problem. Uh, next slide, please. So within the different uh, projects, you have activities. So this is this one's for housing stability. You've already done your admin. Say say you're doing some 10% ad, admin, and then you would do if you have data collection, homelessness prevention, whatever you're doing, whatever you're requesting, you would you would uh, fill that out. Um, next slide, please. Well, here's the technical assistance site, which will have a lot of the documents, and also it has a consolidated plan. And next, we're going to have questions and answers, and we'll have a lot of answers, and Scott Gary is going to lead that session. Thank you.